it's very interesting, Oscar, because now at this moment, um, talking about COVID, we are facing also some tension in society on, on the so-called anti-vax uh, uh, movement, no? uh, anti-vaccine. Um, how would, would uh, Paulo Ferre deal with this, let's call it polarization? No? There are two uh, or more even uh, uh, very determined, uh, very um, obvious uh, uh, opinions, uh, very extreme, let's call them, uh, like uh, polar polarization works. How would he deal with it or his methodology? How could you do that? <laughs> well, I think that he will take in account this different mm, perspective on positions and try to make a proposal of dialogue about this because he, he was always pr proposing a critical dialogue. That then means that each argument had to found its own foundation of this argument And, and must understand not just at this statement, but what does that means in terms of reality. So, for example, to analyze the, the, the discussion on, on this um, impact of the, uh, of the COVID, uh, there are some economical, social, political, and cultural elements that you can relate from your own personal situation and or the situation of your, your neighborhood or your country. And then about that, uh, um, taking a, in account this, you can reinforce your statement and your position to have an argument. And, and this argument must be um, inspired, must be um, a proposal to, to policies To, to do. And uh, this, this means that it's a political debate that is needed, and it's a scientific debate that is needed. And there also is, is the, the, the need of have the, inf the information that can reinforce your formation for argue something. You know? So I think he, he will um, help us to understand, for example, why the, the social and economical conditions of many people, and for example, now in many countries, allow now to have access to vaccines or not, mm -hmm. to have uh, conditions to health conditions that are better or worse when you get in touch with the, the, the virus. And how, how are the, the uh, for example, which type of resources have the medical institutions um, in, in Latin America, At this moment, we have faced that all the privatization process of the health and education has a very strong impact on uh, what the, the, the virus is creating because we don't have enough hospitals, enough public um, attention, and many people could be uh, saved from, from death or to get uh, severely ill if we would, would have all the resources that the privatization process of health and education had created because there is no money uh, enough to uh, have public uh, health conditions everywhere. Okay. So, yeah. so uh, more or less, I think the Friday would help us to, to, think, to think more deeply on the issues that are our concern for this moment. Always have a starting point From, from what we think or what we see, and then go further to make and analyze a, a critical reflection and study about that and dialogue about that, and then propose something to do with that. You know? mm -hmm. so, so that's why in Brazil at this moment, there's, there's a very intensive movement inspiring Freire uh, to, to defend the, the right of health, public health, Uh, they in Brazil it has the um, SUS, the system, unique system of health uh, that had allowed to produce, include their own vaccines, but they had to fight against the political view of Bolsonaro and his regime that are den denying the impact of that. And, and it is one of the countries that had more death, there is uh, near at this moment of 700,000 people death of, 
of um, uh, COVID in, in, in Brazil. And it, it, it doesn't uh, um, uh, stop because at, from several time, uh, months, uh, there was denying from the from the government the impact of the, uh, what this disease could could have. No, so I think uh, this defense of the the health system is uh, inspired also in getting in touch with the people, the getting conscience in in have uh, measures and also to big con to to build conditions because if you don't have tap water, if you don't have um, access. To, to health center and, and you begin to be um, infected, uh, then you don't have the conditions to survive. No? Yeah. So, so I, I think that this is more or less the, the things that are happening uh, now. So as you see, the phrase is no um, thinking is, is very, very wide because it's not only a method, a dialogical method, that is a dialogical method, but it's not only, it's not an educational method for um, systematic or formal education, but it it is, but also is more than, it's, it's a philosophy of how we can learn from, uh, from the beginning, starting with the things that we're living, how we can learn and how we, we can, build learnings together in terms of change, change. In, in terms of uh, looking for which this knowledge can contribute to change and to change for better. So, so this issue, I think it's, um, this is, it's, it's very important to understand wh why Freddy has so, <laughs> so strong contribution and how uh, at this moment we are, um, uh, we have every day plenty of activities in all Latin America uh, and the Caribbean around Paulo Freire in the, at the universities, at the social movements, at the um, schools, uh, at the uh, also some um, municipalities and government they are doing a lot of activities: the solidarity movement, the human rights movement, the women movement, the indigenous movement. Everyone is inspired at this moment in this month to having the centenary of Freire as a way of inspiring to have a reflection and action process to um, build better conditions. I don't know if in, in Europe there's also some activities, uh, uh, but perhaps aren't so widespread as here. At least uh, we try with these uh, interviews uh, uh, to put some attention on, on this uh, legacy, no? Um, but um, no, you know that the, the, the only um, book uh, which was translated uh, in, in, in Flemish in this case uh, was the pedagogy of, of the oppressed. Um, ben, but when I talk with people about his, his uh, philosophy and, and methods and everything, Many people of a certain age, maybe, uh, remember it and say that it would be an opportunity uh, to, to have this reflection also here on what kind of education we have and we should have. Because we, um, I think we, we have an educational system where the banking concept eh, of transferring uh, knowledge is in the first uh, place. It's not at all critical. Uh, it's not in the sense of transformation of uh, society. But um, I think his, his ideas would be a very interesting uh, inspiration. And I'm convinced it's still um, uh, for these modern times in, in uh, 2021, still useful uh, to, to have this uh, approach and, and uh, to do it in, in another way uh, of, of learning uh, and not learning for, for your job and your skills, but for, uh, for this transformation of, of uh, society, especially with yeah, the climate uh, problems and, and, and the sustainable development goals, uh, which are, uh, should be uh, at the center of, of the political uh, process. Uh, we, we could uh, uh, use these ideas on, on uh, uh, conscientization of, of people, saying that they are part of the solution. Eh? It's not only uh, the politics uh, that should do it. Eh? It's, it's really society that should find it. Um, so 
we would like to try uh, to motivate the people and, and colleagues mm-hmm. in the same social cultural sector to reflect on it. And uh, I think it's useful, uh, this uh Yes. No, and, and as you're saying, um, this uh, this idea of um, creating critical consciousness uh, that is basic in the in the Freire's thinking, it means that everything that you can uh, learn, everything that you can study, you have to relate it with the situation of your living and with the responsibility that, that you have in society. So this idea of uh, democrat, dem- democratic processes that allows the people to participate really in the, the decisions that are making means information and means formation, means, means to build criteria up through a, a critical thinking. But uh, a banking uh, educational process, no, in terms that there's a message that you go and, and you send, and then it, it's going to enter into the minds of the people and repeat it. That also is it's a, a problem that we have in, the, in our society. We have, we have plenty of information uh, circulating, but uh, w- we need to analyze it to create to to be the links to make our own cap- our own thinking. No, a critical thinking means that you have your own capability to think, to search, to analyze, to, to study. So it's interesting to, to for example, as, as you say, pedagogy, um, pedagogy of the press was was very, it's a very important book. But this book was created in 1978. You know? And the, the main statements is about this banking pedagogy against a democratic mm-hmm. pedagogy yeah? and the dialogue as, as a, um, a founding process to uh, resolve the oppressed relation, relationship, you know? so the oppression relationship. So, so this is the, the basic statement. But after that, for example, when Freire re- returned to, to Brazil in the 80s, he began to, to write other books so important that normally are not well known. For example, he wrote Pedagogy of Hope. And in Pedagogy of Hope, he makes an analysis of what happened in this 20 years between Pedagogy of the Press was publicated and the situation at the at, 90s. At no? And he analyzed his own path he criticized some concepts that he was using, and he shares how he was discussing and creating this statement of pedagogy of the press. And then there's another book that in in uh, um, in Portuguese is uh, Professora C si, Tia No, so a teacher yes, but aunt, aunt no. No, that it's going directly to the role of the teacher in terms of his or her um, loving capability, but critical capability, the, 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 the link between authority and liberty in education is very interesting in this book. And also he has, uh, in Spanish, it's a, it has a translation that is it's called Letters to who, Whom Wants to Be Learned, uh, Teachers. No? To who pretend to teach, to pretend. Uh, and, and, and so so it's uh, and, and you can you can read these letters and say it's letters to who pretend to create knowledge, to pretend to create learnings, no, not just to teach the, the contents. Uh, there's also another one that it's very important. Um, this in in Portuguese, pedagogia da autonomia. Uh, that is very small, but it's very, very important. I, I would recommend every teacher, every person who works in education in any way, non-formal, informal education, to read this, this book. It has three chapters, and each chapter is divided in nine sub-chapters, each one with uh, and it's an, a challenge. I, I, I mean, so there, there are 27 challenges. No? And the, the, the first chapter is called There is No... I don't know how to say it in English, in Castellano, no hay docencia sin licencia. There's no learning without, there, there's no teaching without learning. No? And, and he says, for example, to teach demands respect to the knowledge of, it, of, of, of the, the learners. 
and to teach the man's ethic and aesthetic, and to teach the man's uh, critical reflection and practice. And then he has a whole chapter that is titulated um, to teach is not to transfer knowledge. So he developed a lot of what we were talking about. And the third chapter is to teach is an species and a human specificity or a human speciality. You know, so so he uh, discussed about liberty, about autonomy, about the capability of being uh, responsible with uh, with the history. So pedagogy of autonomy, I think it's a, it's a, a, an important book, and uh, for all who wants to to work in universitary extension, for example. In Chile, he wrote a very, and, and it's a pamphlet, and, and, and it's, it's a booklet, it's small, that's called Extension or Communication, where he creates a criticized idea that from the universities or the institutions, you are going to extend the knowledge to others, or you have to build a communicating Dialogue. process okay. yeah. Yes, yeah. About, uh, about that. So... I would recommend uh, to to read this uh, this this book because uh, it it um, return and retakes uh, the main um, statements that Freire made in Pedagogy of the Press, but concrete it in terms of the abilities to 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 and challenges that you have to to manage in the educational process. So the educational process is also always an adventure. It's not a bureaucratic task. Uh -huh. It's not a thing that it's already done and then I have a syllabus finish, and I have to yeah. transmit it, finish, no. But each each activity, it, it's a challenge. It's an adventure. And how can I do some critical questions? And perhaps the, the students are going to ask me things that I don't know. So then we can begin to search together, together. about this, this yeah. issue. No? So, so you get involved in, in a process of learning and, and creating learners and be yourself learner as, as an educator. So I think there is one of the main ideas that give us another sense, another sense of what we do as educators. And always we have to see in which world are we, in which conditions, and what is this is related with what is happening in our place, in our country, in our neighborhood, in our house, in our personal experience, in, in our world. So, so the these this, um, concerns about history is not only a philosophical big concern, it means with the concrete uh, daily life history that we have in our hands. Mm -hmm. So our responsibility in this uh, And this, this issue is crucial, you know? but if we don't have the, this perspective, we just can be resigned to, um, to be uh, accepting what, what is happening and not feel that we can create what we want to happen. So exactly. that's great is thinking. In, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe Oscar, uh, I wanted to ask uh, if, if this legacy of Paulo Ferri is still relevant for Uh, 2021, and especially for for Europe, but you always uh, uh, already gave uh, the answer. No, <laughs> it's it's a, uh, because of this um, uh, specific approach on on education, on, on a philosophical, educational, but also political way. It's it's also relevant, I guess, uh, for for Europe, for Belgium, uh, to to apply it. Uh, 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 I I guess so. Yes, yes, and and you know that um, it will really uh, Freire is, is is needed to be studied in in, in every in every country uh, because also he was he took inspirations from philosophy in in Europe and in the United States and the northern countries and uh, for example the links with um, uh, Ludwig uh, Grundwig in in the northern and the in the um, I'd say the Nordic countries uh, that, that was an educator that inspired in the Nordic edu education is, is, is very close, even though they didn't need, knew each other, uh, yeah. it's very close with the, the, the Freire's thinking. And all what we can analyze and discuss on 
critical pedagogy. That is one of the main currents at this moment. And you can study McLaren, Giroud, and you can say that they are inspired in Freire. Mm -hmm. So what sometimes we receive from Europe of the new thinking on critical pedagogy, when we enter that, we discover that they are inspired in what Freire has created. Okay. You know? So it's a, an intercultural and international dialogue that must be must be done. And it's a pity that there are many uh, so so few translations of um, Freire's thinking. Even though I, I was in Germany some years ago and in a seminar, and we took some uh, texts uh, of Freire to discuss. And, and even though my English is not perfect, uh, I and understood that this translation didn't reflect exactly what he said in Portuguese or in, in Spanish. No? So, so there is as an issue of um, um, analyze, understanding better his, his own basic concern. I'm going to show you something that I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in Brazil, they have produced the, the, the um, how to say, the handwrite of um, a facsimile of the, the book with the um, writing, of, uh, yeah. Yeah. writing of, of Paul of Fred, you know? So, so it's very interesting to analyze how this manuscript, you say, you know? Yeah. And one thing interesting is that this book has been published in, I don't know, 40, 60, 20 languages. But until 1970, 1997, so 30 years after, this small drawing about uh -huh. the theory of, of um, revolutionary action and theory of oppressed action wasn't included in the in the in the first, first edition. Yeah. edition so this is a, a discovery of the last years okay. last uh, eight seven years when they at the Instituto de Paulo Freire took in account the the manuscript and they made this facsimile edition we could find a lot of things that weren't the uh, um, communicate of his his main Work. So there's a lot of things to study about it. There are theses, I think, around the world. If you enter in the internet and you search mm -hmm. theses on Paulo Freire, writings on Paulo Freire, and right, you can find at this moment, I think, many, many things. So if the people that are looking this program and um, get interested and curious, no, as Freire, we would say, or well, what Freire can, can think, they can enter into, into internet and perhaps um, you can enter into a, a website that it's Memorial Paulo Freire. Mm -hmm. Memorial Paulo Freire, uh, that is created by the Instituto Paulo Freire. And uh, that allows you to enter in a, a lot of different um, electronic libraries uh, that the Instituto Paulo Freire are linked to. And there's in many different languages, and I hope in Flemish also, and uh, in, in, in other we'll languages. We will try. <laughs> try to find out. Can yeah. be some issues, no? Okay. Okay, Oscar, thank you very much for this uh, inspirational uh, talk. And, and yeah, I mean, we, we can conclude that the, the legacy and, and the philosophy and the spirit of Paulo Freire is... It's alive and kicking, no? It's it's very interesting that uh, such a person, 100 years after he, he was born, yeah. can still have this this kind of influence and uh, give this inspiration uh, in, in modern times. Uh, let's say, no. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. We take this uh, inspiration with us, and uh, maybe we can apply it also in our sector of uh, social and cultural work with. Uh, with adults, I'm sure. We okay, I, I, I will be very glad that it can be useful and we are inviting to the, uh, this is our Latin American Caribbean campaign in defense of the legacy of Paulo Freire. Okay. Not as a thing of the past, but exactly as you said, what does this mean to, to us now? Now. Right. It's our place in history and what is the inspiration for creating our own history in, in the middle of, of those confusing situations, complex exactly. situations. Yeah. But 
that's that uh, really it's it's important thing that we are not doing uh, any superficial things. We are challenged to do important things at this moment. So that's challenge. that's the challenge that we have. Okay. Thank you very much. Dick. Thank you very much. Let's go. Uh, see you.